Okay, this video is going to take you through um, the process of making a few graphs in SPSS. I apologize if you can hear music at this time. I have the world's loudest neighbors. Um, graphs. Okay, so I have the Add Health Lab data set open. Um, the principles are essentially the same regardless of which data set you're working with. I know that the exercises that you're going to do at the end of this chapter require that you switch between data sets, so maybe I'll open another data set in a few minutes just so you can get a look at that as well. Um, so first, if I wanted to make a frequency table regarding or using these variables, I'll go to Analyze, and then Descriptive Statistics, and Frequencies. Um, now at this point I can choose as many variables as I want to. I could do one at a time. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So I'll just do um, respondents grade in school. That's a good enough variable, I suppose. Now if I wanted to edit, sort of figure out what my um, what my output is going to include, I have lots of options here on the right side. So if you wanted to do quartiles, if you wanted to do the mean or the median, uh, measures of variability, etc. Um, we're not quite there yet, but just so you know it's there. Um, so I'm just going to put that variable there and then click OK. And my output window will pop up showing a frequency table. You can see how many people I have in my sample, 1,697. You can see I'm not missing any of them. I have zero in the missing column. Um, then I have my uh, my frequency table here, so it tells you the number of people who are in 7th grade, 218, that happens to be 12.8% of my sample. Um, now this valid percent column doesn't really apply uh, in this case, this valid percent is a way of uh, dealing with any missing var variables, so if some of our respondents hadn't filled out this question, let's say 100 people skipped it for some reason, um, we would see some variation in this valid percent column just because uh, it would account for that. But because um, we have no missing data in this case, um, our valid percent and our percent column are going to be identical to one another. This also gives us a nice cumulative percent column that tells us the percentage of people who fall in each category and below. So you can see 12.8% of our respondents are in seventh grade. Um, and 27.9% of our respondents are in either 8th grade or 7th grade. To get this 27.9%, you would just add 12.8 plus 15.1 gives us, sorry, just won't go away, 27.9%. Uh, so that's a frequency table. You can make that with any number of variables. Something you should be aware of, though. Let me make another one. Uh, with a nominal level variable. So I'll do respondents race and then click OK. Uh, now one thing you should be aware of is that SPSS regardless of the level of measurement will give you a cumulative percent column even though with a nominal level variable that makes absolutely no sense. It makes no sense to say okay what percentage of people are black or below or Asian Pacific Islander or above. Um, so just it's important that when you're dealing with nominal level data that you remember you really only need to report these two columns, the frequency and percent. Anything beyond that, cumulative percent or cumulative frequency, really wouldn't be appropriate. So that's a frequency table. Now I'm going to show you how to make some graphs. So let's start with a pie chart. I'll go to graphs and then again I'll go down to legacy dialogues. You can skip all of this stuff. Go to legacy dialogues. Um, let's start with a pie chart. I'm going to make a pie chart, um, and you want to keep this top option, this default option summaries for groups of cases um, is fine. So click define. And sorry, I was making a graph previously. Um, here we have the box where our variable is going to go. This define slices by. Slices represent, we can have them represent either numbers of cases or percents of cases. Uh, in a pie chart, the difference between those two isn't really that big of a deal. I usually just stick with n number of cases. So let's say, um, let's do parent marital status as our 
pie chart. So I'm going to put this in the define slices by box. And then I'm going to click OK. There are no rows, there are no columns, so you can go ahead and ignore both of those. Click OK. And lo and behold, here is my pie chart. Uh, it looks like blue represents our single parents, green the overwhelming majority, represents our married parents on down, widowed, divorced, and separated. Um, now let's say you wanted to change the color of this graph or you didn't like something about the way that it was set up. Uh, in, if you want to do any editing, you're just going to double click on the graph itself and it will open up the chart editor. Um, so if you wanted to um, change the colors or something along those lines, you can, if you were so inclined, you could add a background to this or something. Um, I'm just going to change something really quickly just so you can see how it looks. Um, I'll go ahead and label these different slices. You can go into data label mode by clicking on this little target and it will tell you um, the number of people who fall into each category. We'll just add that to your chart as a whole. Um, it's kind of hard with this smaller slice. Um, so I've labeled my data, and as you can see, I close out of that, and it's been applied to my chart as a whole. Um, from here, let's go to a bar chart. So again, we're going to go to graphs, and then down to legacy dialogs, and then over to bar. Now, you can do three different kinds of bar charts in SPSS. You can do a simple bar chart. That's when you're just looking at the frequencies of one variable. A clustered bar chart will allow you to break that one variable across different categories of a second variable. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Um, and a stacked bar chart does essentially the same thing as a clustered bar chart. It just makes it look a little bit different. Some people prefer the look of the stacked bar chart to the clustered bar chart. So I'll start with just a simple one. Click simple there and then click define. And we can choose really any variable we want to. I'll do respondents grade in English. I'll put that in my category axis box. And again, we can do either number of cases or we could do percent of cases or cumulative percent. I'm just going to stick with number of cases um, and then click OK. And you can see this is my bar chart showing the respondents grade in English. Looks like most everybody got either an A or a B, which I suppose is positive. For some reason, the default. Uh, color for all bar charts is this sort of, I don't even know what you would call this, like khaki or olive drab. Um, so again, if you wanted to change that, make it a little bit more visually appealing, you could double click on that and go to the chart editor. Uh, okay, so next let's make a clustered bar chart. So let's say, like, okay, that's awesome that that's what people's grades in English were, but let's say we want to break that up between boys and girls or men and women. Um, so I'll go to graphs, and then I will go to legacy dialogues, and I'm going to go to bar charts again. And this time I'm going to do a clustered bar chart, because I'm going to take these data and break them up according to gender. Again, click define. So you can see I've already been playing around with this. Uh, when you log in, you'll, or when you open this box, these will likely be blank. Uh, so I'm going to go uh, respondents grade in English, put that in my category axis, and then I'm going to define clusters by gender. So I'm going to get a separate bar graph for each grade by gender, and you'll see what I mean in just a second. Click OK. And you can see here, uh, blue represents our males, green represents our females. If you look at the percentage of people who got A's, it looks like um, tend to be overwhelmingly female. Um, and if you look at C's and D's, they tend to be overwhelmingly male, so um, not really a ringing endorsement of male teenagers' English language abilities, um, but there might be something else at work here. Uh, okay, so the last type of graph that you'll have to make is a histogram, which can only be used with interval ratio level data. So to get a good interval ratio level variable, I'm going to open a new data set. So I can click on either one of these, open these folders, 
and sooner or later it will open up my lab data folder. You might have to point SPSS to that folder again. Uh, for me, it just remembers it for some reason. So I'm going to go with the NIS lab data. And again, you'll have to let it think for a second. And lo and behold, there are my NIS lab data. So I'm going to make a histogram by going to graphs, and then legacy dialogues, and then down to histogram. Um, and I'm going to do years of school completed. That's a nice interval ratio level variable. Then I'm going to click OK. And you can see, even though I switched data sets, so I have a different window open, all of my output is going to appear in the same window, which is kind of nice. That means you only have to export one document. Um, so you can see this is my histogram. Sorry, it's kind of hard to navigate. It gives me a mean, it gives me a standard deviation, tells me the number of observations, and then it also tells me um, how people are distributed. Now, it looks a lot like a bar chart, the key difference being that with a histogram, the distance between these bins or these bars um, is actually meaningful. So um, somebody who has completed 20 years of education has completed exactly 10 more years than someone who has completed only 10 years of education. And you can even do math with it, so like 20 minus 10 is equal to 10. Uh, that's not the case with a standard ordinal level bar chart. You can't really subtract B minus A gives you what? I don't know. Um, all right, so that's a bar chart, that's a histogram, that's a pie chart, and that's a frequency table. That should be everything that you need to do uh, to make it through this chapter. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to contact your course instructor or your course TA.